Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now audio is a big part of the smartphone experience and people spend time and money investing in headphones and wireless headphones and speakers to try to improve that audio experience. But of course, if the source of your audio is bad, then it doesn't matter how expensive your equipment is, you're still gonna get bad quality sound. So the question before us today is how do computers store audio? Well, let me explain. In the real world, sound waves travel through the air, they arrive at our ears, and our brain interprets them into music and speech and other types of sound. Now we can see those sound waves when we register them on a computer. Now the biggest difference between the analog world and the digital world is the digital world works on time slots. Everything happens in a certain time frame. Now those time slots might be very, very tiny, however they are still time slots, they are not continuous. So when we record sound, we need to ask ourselves the question, how often should we be recording the level of the sound wave, the amplitude of the sound wave? Let me give you an example. If I said to you, I wonder if you could tell me in an email the temperature throughout the day outside your house. Now you could just go outside your house once, look at the temperature and come back and send me a number, 23 degrees Celsius. Well, that doesn't tell me how much it is through the day. I've lost a lot of information there. So I say, no, can I have something that's a bit more accurate, please? So maybe you go out and you register it in the morning, at lunchtime, and in the evening. But again, that's only three points of data, and it's a very, very rough. So we could say, well, okay, measure it every hour. Now that would give me maybe a better graph. Could you measure the temperature every 10 minutes? Could you measure it every minute? Could you measure it every second? So you see, as we increase the accuracy, we do it more and more often. And it's exactly the same with sound. You could measure it once uh, over a whole second and you, you would get no information at all. It would just be, be rubbish. You could start to measure it quicker and quicker and quicker and there you get a better representation of the sound wave. Now in audio, this is called the sampling rate. How often do you take a sample to see the level of the uh, sound wave? Now there are some mathematical theorems that come in here and the most important is one called the Nyquist theorem which tells us that to register something we need to use twice the frequency of the sound wave that we're measuring. Now the human ear can hear up to about 20 kilohertz. So we need to use 40 kilohertz as our sampling rate as a bare minimum. Now CD quality was 44.1 kilohertz and today some systems use 48 kilohertz and those are basically the standard sampling rates for music. Now there are some situations where people record in a higher sampling rate. Now I'm talking here about playback through your smartphone or maybe through some other audio equipment. If you're doing studio work, there may be arguments for recording, for sampling at a higher rate. But for playback, 44.1 or 48 kilohertz are just absolutely fine. Now the other side of this is you say, well, what great, what measure, what gradient are we using to measure this sound wave? Again, I could say to you, please go outside every hour and tell me the temperature. And you could come back and say, it was hot, and then it was hot, and then it was cold. Well, that doesn't really tell me very much. That's just binary information, hot or cold, one bit of information. So maybe you could increase your scale. Maybe in the morning you could come out and say it was very cold. By mid-morning it was just cold. During the afternoon it was hot. Then late afternoon it was very hot. And then it got cold again and then very cold. And here I just have four different states. So that gives me two bits of information. Well, of course, if you think about a thermometer when we're measuring temperature, maybe there's 100 or 120, 130 different levels that we can measure temperature on. Maybe even more if we use fractions. So with audio, we need to have a good system for measuring the level of the audio. Now, eight bits would give us 256 different levels, and 16 bits give us over 65,000 different levels, and 24 bit gives us over 16 million different levels. Now, there are some arguments for using 24 bit audio, and we'll go into that in a minute. However, a lot of systems use just 16 bit audio, which gives you 65,000 different levels when you are registering the sound. So, at 44,000 times a second, a point is plotted on a graph somewhere within a range of 65,000 different points, and that is how the sound is recorded. And that system is called PCM, Pulse Code Modulation. 
Now, when you have this digital music on your smartphone, it needs to be turned back from a digital system into an analog system that then powers your headphones or a speaker or something else. Now, to do that, you need to use something that's called a digital to audio converter. And the digital to audio converter, the DAC, has the job of taking all those reference points of uh, information about the waves in the sound and converting it back again into real sound. Now, there are lots of different technologies involved in doing that. However, there are a couple of important things to realize. One is that sometimes you might see diagrams that show kind of the waves as being squares with big steps on them. Well, that's actually not quite true. The way DACs work is that using interpolation, using some filters, they are actually able to smooth out the data, the sine wave that comes out from that data. One of the ways they do that is using oversampling. And every time you oversample something, you can actually, if you double the oversampling, you can reduce the amount of noise in the audible spectrum by up to 3 dB. So actually some DACs will go do lots of oversampling and then reduce it back down again to produce the sound wave. So there's lots of technologies involved, but don't think that DACs are producing kind of these square waves. They're not. It's all very, very smooth. Now your mobile phone will have a DAC in it and hopefully it will have a high quality DAC and hopefully it will produce good sound from that digital audio. Of course, the cheaper the phone, the chances are the cheaper the components and the chances are the cheaper the DAC. That's why you need to be happy with a DAC that's inside your phone. Now I mentioned earlier on there was an argument for using 24-bit uh, playback and 24-bit recording. Now the reason behind it is this, all audio circuits produce an amount of noise. Now the amount of noise they produce depends on the quality and so on. Now the best we can produce a day is 124 decibels of signal to noise ratio. Now 124 decibels means 21 bits of information. Now 21 bits is greater than the 16 bits that you find in a lot of formats and it's coming close to, 100, uh, to 24 bits. So 24 bits would seem to be the optimum best situation for uh, audio playback. Now, I'm not talking about studio stuff here. If you're doing things in a the studio, there is a good argument for using 32 bits because sound waves need to be manipulated, they need to be added, they need to be changed, they need to be mixed around, and you need a lot of bandwidth so there's no clipping going on. I'm talking now about playback. 24-bit playback really is the best that we can expect. Now, the problem with the PCM format, this raw format of all this data we've captured as we're registering the sound wave, is it can produce very large files. For example, a 16-bit capture of four minutes of music at 16 bits, 44.1 kilohertz, will produce a file size of around 40 megabytes. Now, clearly that's not good for streaming services. It's not good when you're streaming data over 3G or 4G. So there has to be a way of generating smaller files. And that's where we get into the different file formats that are available today. Now there are two different types of file format. One is called lossless, which means there is no loss of any of that data that was used to record the sound originally. And the other is lossy, which means that there has been some quality lost during the production of the sound file. Now the wave.wav files that you might find on PCs is really a, a raw PCM format and that is lossless. There's nothing lost in that. There's also this very popular uh, codec called FLAC, and that also is lossless. Now, FLAC has the advantage that while it doesn't lose any of the data in the file, it does use compression, which means it can shrink down the file size to, to roughly a half. However, that's still pretty big. So then we move on to the lossy formats. Now, the way these work, for example, MP3 is a classic example of a lossy format, is there are algorithms that are used trying to understand how the brain works, trying to understand how the ear interprets these sounds and chops out bits that they reckon can't be heard. Now, of course, those that are very sensitive about music will say, but you can hear it, uh, there is a big difference, and I'm not gonna get into that argument. But the idea of a loss, lossy compression algorithm is it doesn't just strip away randomly things, it tries to strip away things that are not needed. And then it also uses compression on top of that to reduce the file size. So for example, four minutes of WAV might be 40 megabytes, but four minutes of an MP3 at 320 kilobits per second might only be nine megabytes, 10 megabytes. So that's really like a quarter of the size. And that's why MP3 is so popular today because we can have relatively high quality music, near CD quality music, 
that is actually a lot smaller, which is great for streaming and great for storing on our devices. Now, there are other lossy formats other than just MP3. There's also OG Vorbis, which is an open source codec, and there's also the advanced audio codec AAC and AAC+, which is used more predominantly by Apple and within iTunes and so on. However, Android can play AAC files that don't have any DRM. Now, the advantage of AAC is that at lower bit rates, it certainly has a greater audio quality than MP3 files. At higher bit rates, there are arguments between people about which one's actually best. Probably AAC comes out on top. However, at higher bit rates, they certainly are comparable with each other. So let's just sum up. Audio is recorded by measuring the amplitude of a wave at a certain time interval, and we measure that roughly nowadays at 44,000 times a second or 48,000 times a second. The measure, the gradient that's used to measure that is 16 bit is 65,000 different levels, 24 bit is 16 million different levels, and that produces the accuracy of which we are registering something that come from the analog world into a digital representation. Now, when that gets into your phone and you want to turn it back into analog again, it goes through a DAC and the DAC converts that data back into a sound wave. And it's got lots of clever technology inside of it that does things like smoothing and shaping that actually makes the sound that comes out as close as possible to the original. And there are different quality DACs and different quality phones have different DACs in them and they are able to produce different qualities of sound. And that's basically based on the cost of the DAC inside of that phone. And finally, there are different formats. Now we have a, an old saying in software engineering that if you put rubbish in, you're gonna get rubbish out. So if you start with a rubbish audio file, it doesn't matter how good your audio equipment is, you're gonna get rubbish out the other end. But if you start with a good source, then there's a chance you're gonna get good output. Now there are lossless and lossy uh, codecs. Lossless include FLAC and WAV, WAV files. Lossy include MP3, OG, Vorbis and uh, AAC and AAC plus each have their own characteristics about the amount of compression they can do the amount of data that's stripped out of them and the final file size well my name is Gary Sim from Android Authority I hope you enjoyed this introduction to audio and as I've said on other of my videos this only is an introduction it can't be more than that in just a few minute of video but I do hope you liked it and if you did please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow Android Authority on Twitter, Google Plus, and on Instagram. Don't forget to download the Android app. But last but not least, don't forget to go to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.